Hello and welcome to this TypeScript tutorial series. Uh, in this series, we are going to learn about TypeScript programming language, uh, what it is from scratch and where you can use it and each, uh, each and everything that you should know about TypeScript. Okay, so I'll try to keep the series uh, for newcomers, for beginners as well, so that if you don't know anything about TypeScript, you'll get to know it uh, from scratch. Okay. So in the first video, I'm going to talk about a little bit of theories uh, in, in what is TypeScript, what is a compiler and all. If you know some of the theory, if you know what is TypeScript, but if you just want to get too familiar with the syntax, feel free to skip this video. Uh, for those who don't know about anything about TypeScript, about compilers, about transpilers, uh, here I'm going to talk about each and every one of these things. Okay, so what is TypeScript? Uh, TypeScript is a programming language. It was created by Microsoft. Uh, it, it's basically a superset of JavaScript, but a typed superset. Now, what it means, what is a statically typed programming language and all these things we'll see uh, in the next uh, steps, okay? So before understanding static typing and dynamic typing, you need to first understand two important terminologies. What is a compiler? Okay, a compiler, you must have heard about it like compiling the code and all. So you must have even seen in the movies and all. The compiler is nothing but a, a tool that accepts your source code, that the code that you are writing. And it emits the, it, 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 uh, it, it accepts the source code and it emits the code that is understandable, understandable by the machines itself, okay? So you uh, machine requires some specific uh, code that you can see it here. What you do is you don't write any of this code because it's not readable, right? What you do is you write the code in some high level language like C, Java, Python. And the compiler's job is to convert this code to something that machine can understand like this. Now, both uh, of the program that you can see here are doing the same job, right? Both are taking a number and they're gonna square them like this. They're gonna multiply them. But uh, the, com the, the assembly code that you are seeing is not exactly readable. Uh, I can sh point you out that here is the place where the multiplication is happening, but few, it, it requires few of the other things as well. And that's why it is not feasible to write all of the assembly code by yourself. So what you do is you write the code yourself in some high level language, which is readable, which is small, compact, and you compile it to you give it to compiler and compiler will convert it to the required code that is actually going to run on the machine. Okay. So that is the job of compiler. It takes some high level language, high level as in that you can read, it converts it to some low level language, low level as in towards the machine. Okay. Towards your computer. Now, keeping that aside, the next concept that you need to know is a transpiler. What is a transpiler? It is something similar to a compiler. Its job is to convert the code, but it converts from one high level language to other high level language. Okay. Uh, sometimes it's known as source to source compiler as well, because uh, it, 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 it converts from one human readable code to another human readable code, which you can then feed, feed to compile, uh, you know, another proper compiler. Okay. Uh, so one of the uh, most popular example of this is uh, of course TypeScript. Uh, we'll see that how it is a, a transpiler and all. Uh, other thing you may know about is uh, if you know React, then you must have heard about Babel, right? In React, we write the code like this. We write tags, but inside JavaScript. How is this a valid JavaScript? It's not, right? So what Babel does is Babel takes this code and it converts it to this type of code, right? React.create element h1 why h1 because we are creating the h1 tag and then the argument of that tag which are null and then the children of the tag which is hello right so babel is going to take this code for you you're going to write it like this and babel will convert it to this so this is nothing but a source to source compiler or a transpiler now typescript is again another example of this which we'll just see in the next steps okay uh, so keeping these two concepts aside again, so the next two topics that we're going to look at is static typing and dynamic typing. Okay. Dynamic typing, you have been using daily if you are a JavaScript programmer. Dynamic typing is nothing but 
not knowing the type of variable at compile time okay uh, the compiler who's gonna take your code it will not know about what is the type of ages when it's compiling the code just like you can assign anything on the right hand side right it, 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 it the variable name doesn't matter here all that matters is what is the type of variable is it a const let var and what compiler will do is whatever you are giving it to store in in it on the right hand side it will take it and it will store it as it is technically a reference but you'll get the, you get the idea right so compiler doesn't care what is the type of yes is is it a string is it a char is it an array or anything else right you, even if you are making an array you see you can in javascript it is perfectly fine it is perfectly valid to store one number another string and another boolean and so on because compiler the, the, the compiler javascript compiler does not need it doesn't it doesn't ask you for the type of variables it's going to take your values you're going to store them and it's going to keep working on them right so dynamic typing means not knowing the types the types of a variable the types of the data are not known at the compile time when it's going to compile the code for you right now uh, the examples of that are python ruby and js of course uh, there are many other examples but these are i think most common ones uh, the dynamically typed languages are usually faster to type as in you are you you get to work with them a bit faster to prototype them right so but they are technically slower to learn or run than statically typed languages the reason for that we'll see in the next slide okay and of course they are usually not safe at runtime when you're gonna run this code remember that at some point if you have written something like age dot uh parse something like that to convert it to a number maybe it will fail because it's a string and you are assuming because of the variable name is age you may be assuming it's a it's a number and if you're trying to execute some number prototype method on this age it will fail and transport the compiler will not be able to do anything about it because it doesn't care about the remember it doesn't care about the type of age so you have to be careful about not using any number method number prototype method on uh, age variable compiler will not do that for you and that's why they are usually not safe at runtime when you're gonna run the code you have to be careful about all these things so, and most of the time you'll be you know, seeing of course it does not mean that dynamically typed languages are not good for production grade applications but most of the time it you'll you'll see them like javascript python are usually used for smaller utilities and all uh, kind of stuff okay so the uh, again the second concept that is exactly opposite of that is static typing if dynamically typed means type of variable is not known at compile time static typing is exact opposite the type of variable is known at the compile time when compiler is gonna take your source code it will know what is x is it a number is it a string is it a boolean is it anything else is it struck union anything else right compiler will know about it and based on that now compiler can do lots of optimization as well as safety checks right uh, the thing that you're gonna do with the age you cannot do that here if you're if you're declaring it as if you're declaring your variable as int you won't be able to store a string in it and this is how statically typed languages save you from making mistakes at runtime this mistake will be cast when the compiler is going to compile your code okay so usually they are uh, technically slower to type than dynamically type because you have to care about the type of each and every variable you cannot just say const x and store anything in it whatever you want but of course it uh, that results into faster uh, the runtime as well as you know safer runtime there are less chances of making silly mistakes right uh, these type of languages are usually preferred for production grade applications you must have seen you know lots of java uh, the you know lots of java uh, the developers and all like the people who are using c c++ uh, in in the domains like uh, especially like gaming performance related stuff and all, operating systems uh, right so these are some of the examples of statically typed languages c c++ rust and all uh, so the 
all these concepts whatever we learned so far is gonna we're gonna need this while learning typescript okay so coming back to typescript what is typescript typescript is statically typed in fact okay Sta you when you're gonna write typescript you'll be declaring the type of variable like this is it a number then write a number if it's a string write string with a colon you, you're gonna declare a type of ages and then you'll be working with it as as normal now a typescript compiler knows about the type of variable right it's a number now it's actually not a compiler right we learned about the what is a transpiler what typescript transpiler will do is it's a source to source compiler so i can refer to it as a compiler as well but what it will do is it will convert this code to this code only but now it knows about the variables while doing the conversion so it's going to check for correctness of it uh, uh, in your entire code it's going to check have you ever used the number method on this age or if you are declaring it as a string have you uh, ever used any other methods on this and then once it's 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 done it's checking throughout your code it's going to convert this to this right so it, it actually converts it to your valid javascript only while erasing the types for you it's technically a superset of js so even if you don't declare the type all valid javascript is a valid typescript even if you just write it like this that is also valid you don't have to do that typescript will be able to take assume you know understand the value so based on the value typescript will be able to understand the type of age is a number which you will see just see in some time but you don't have to write every time you don't have to do that it's just another you know option that you have available of course it's not optional for you know complex types but it it's basically a super set of js you can write without knowing the entire type script you can just keep on writing your js code and most of the time it will be a valid type script code okay and because you are now statically typing it you are you are declaring the types of each and every variable TypeScript compiler will be able to check for correctness of your entire code. It will stop you from making such mistakes like this, right? This code is a is a perfectly valid JavaScript code. If you're gonna declare an empty string and you're gonna check it with the string is equal to zero, JavaScript this is valid. JavaScript will pass this if check and will go inside the if condition, right? This is not valid in uh, TypeScript. TypeScript will stop you from making such mistakes and there are lots of examples of this which we'll just see soon uh, when we are going to actually write the code itself but overall TypeScript job is to do this thing to stop you from making mistake as well as to increase your productivity you don't have to always go up and check what was the spelling of the function you don't have to uh, you know refer the see how what are the type of variable what are the keys in an object is this a valid key and object or not even if you are making a mistake spelling mistake js allows that but typescript will not allow it for you okay so overall that's the idea of typescript uh, in the next video we are gonna actually implement the code we are gonna see how to write the typescript yourself okay thank you for joining i'll see you guys next time